So I want to go ahead and uh, get started here. So this is what to expect in SDS2 2023. Obviously, I've got Caitlin Metcalf here with me today. So I want to start by doing some quick introductions, give you all an idea of who we are. So Caitlin, you want to do a little introduction for us here on, on yourself? Yeah, thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. So glad to be here with you guys today. Um, as David said, my name is Caitlin Metcalf. I am a licensed PE and I have a bit over 15 years of experience um, in structural design, both as a design engineer and quite a bit of experience as well in structural analysis software. Um, so kind of a unique and diverse background, but it suits me quite well for my role here um, as the engineering product manager at SDS2 by Allplan. Um, I've been here for a little bit over a year, uh, so it's really cool for me, especially to be on this webinar, to see what we have accomplished in the short time that I've been around and see these new features and get to show them off with you guys. So I look forward to doing that as well. But I'll pass it back to David now so he can officially introduce himself too. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so my, my name is David Zapka. I've been around here with SDS2 for quite some time now. So. I've been in support, I've done sales, uh, I've helped out in development in the in the past as in those different roles as well. Uh, recently moved over to officially to the product development side of the company here. I uh, believe officially it was last October, so I'm fairly new to the role as the detailing and fabricating product manager. Uh, and you know my my main main responsibilities here now are just kind of looking to the future of the software of SDS2. Where's the detailing and fabricating markets going? What what do we need in the future for uh, to continue you know satisfying our, our current customers and to attract new customers as well to SDS2? So um, our our contact info is is here on the slide. So. If anybody's got any info, things to share with us, you know, always happy to to take that info from wherever we can get it. So uh, let's take a look here. Here's our content that we have today. So tried to break it down in, into some, um, you know, number of different high level topics here. So we've got new and enhanced connection design topic. Uh, we'll focus a bit in on what we've done to enhance the surface finishes in SDS2, a few modeling improvements. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the toolbox updates, the SDS2 toolbox, some of the, the new tools that we've released on there, uh, not necessarily specific to 2023 in that case, but wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of those new tools we've been putting out recently uh, through our website. We've got a few drawing improvements to show you. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the, the newer API developments that we've made throughout the course of this year. So Caitlin, uh, I'm gonna let you start off here with the connection design and uh, what do we got? I'll let you take it away here. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I'm starting off strong, showing off our new connection type that we're bringing up in 2023. Um, it's the new directly welded HSS vertical brace to wide flange connection. So previously we had a directly welded HSS connection, but it was like material to like material. So only HSS to HSS type connections were available. So we've added in this new connection type to support an HSS connection to a supporting wide flange connection. And it can be a wide flange beam or column as we're showing on the left-hand image here, or even um, an HSS vertical brace to a wide flange vertical brace as I'm showing on the right. Um, so that is available as a new connection type coming up in 2023. Okay, very good. Go ahead. And I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, we do design for the uh, stiffeners in the supporting members for those in those cases as well. Is that correct? You're exactly right. And I ha if you want to forward one slide, if you don't have any other questions about oh. this, I get into that as well. <laughs> so okay, I you are a mind reader, David. It's great. So yeah, in addition to that new um, new connection type, we have a number of enhancements. And just like David said, I wanted to kind of roll into, um, into similar features. And so in addition to some other stiffener option enhancements, we are going to have a, a new stiffener option on that HSS to wide flange brace option. 
Um, and then also some other customizable stiffener input for other brace and column connections where you as the user can specify if you always want to have a stiffener, never want to have a stiffener, or even specify a specific partial depth um, dimension for your stiffeners. So there's a number of features tied to that new connection type and other existing brace connections where you might want to um, apply a stiffener. In addition to that, we also have some customization added in for our doubler plates on moment connections. Um, due to some user requests we've had, um, we've added in a checkbox option to allow that doubler plate to infringe on the column K dimension. And we even give you an option to set that minimum infringement depth so that you can limit how much you go into that depth if you choose to do so. Um, another customization feature that came from user requests, we heard a lot of our users um, speak up when we when they were changing from the AIC 14th to 15th edition related to the standard nominal hole dimension. So, I'm showing the table here, J3.3. This is from the 15th edition. And you might have noticed if you've compared the two that um, the standard nominal hole dimension for larger bolt diameters down there circled in red has increased in the 15th edition. Um, so that, of course, we implemented with our 15th edition update. But we've heard back from a lot of users that in the shop, they're still stamping out those holes using the AIC 14th edition sized um, hole dimensions. So currently users were having to do a manual workaround where they'd go in and adjust every single hole dimension, which of course was a pain. So we've added in a quick program override option so that when you're using the 15th edition, you can sit, check a single checkbox that says we want to go back and utilize the nominal hole dimensions for large bolt diameters per the 14th edition when I'm doing 15th edition design. Um, so it's a it's a quick checkbox entry that hopefully should save you guys a ton of time if you are coming across this issue yourself. Yep. And so Caitlin, just to add a little more information to that, yeah. I, if I recall correctly, uh, in some conversations with people from the AISC, the reason they increased that from one sixteenth to an eighth oversize in the fifteenth edition is because of some of the manufacturing standards with those larger bolts, they, they uh, weren't getting quite the tolerance as they do with the smaller size bolts. So it was causing problems with a simple 16th oversize hole. Um, so that's a, they, they did have a good reason yeah. for changing that. Sometimes I feel like uh, we, all, we all feel like AISC changes things just to change that's really not the case. They, they don't do anything without good reason typically. So uh, the explanation I was given was because of the manufacturing tolerances with those those oversized bolts could cause problems in some cases. So um, you're exactly right. Yeah. OK. And, and that, then, of course, that definitely... there's there's always the flip side of that in, in you know, the, the fabricators and, and what tooling they have on hand and all of that, that then can can uh, you know cause issues with the new code or, or cause them to to change a lot of things and that was what we were finding was those fabricators it's, it's expensive for them to to update their tooling and things like that so they want to stick with the the 16th oversize holes so absolutely that, um, and and made the change so yeah very good. Yeah. And I believe we do leave it defaulted off. So when you do select the 15th edition, mm -hmm. we're setting you up to try and meet those code requirements for the new code. Um, but just like David said, we've heard from enough of you. We understand the limits uh, of you know individual shop requirements. And so we're giving you a bit of a safety net there as well, just to help um, help in cases where you might have to otherwise do a ton of manual modeling, which we want to help you avoid. Absolutely, perfect. Yeah. And what else we got? Okay. All so. right. Yeah. In addition to those, we've also added in some options on gusset plate connections to um, let the user specify staggered bolt options. So in that upper right image there, you'll see on a horizontal brace, um, those angles are now connected with staggered bolts. And as a user, you can go in for your various horizontal or vertical braces and specify if you want always staggered, never staggered, or as applicable. Um, so we have some more user customizability there as well. 
Um, we also have added in the design to um, design shear tabs on short W6 beams. Previously, um, we would only give you a shear tab design on a W8 and larger beam. And if you tried to model in the little W6s that we all love, um, it would give you some sort of an error message. But now we are including those um, for shear tab design as well, as you see in that middle image. And then last on this slide, um, we're also very happy to add in a weak axis moment analysis on column splices. Um, so of course they've always been designed for your strong axis moment and strong axis loads, but we're also due to customer request and some enhancements long-term that we're working towards in the future, we're working on adding some, some biaxial analysis options. And so you can now input a weak axis moment and the column splice will be designed for both weak axis and strong axis in combination. Okay, very good, very good. This is all good stuff. Um, I just do wanna mention that I, I do see some questions coming in already on the, yeah. the questions through GoToWebinar. That's all fine. That's great. Please, please do put your questions in there. Uh, we, we will get to those questions at the end of the webinar, however. So um, don't worry. We will, we will get to those questions when we're through uh, with what we have here. So absolutely. Um, a few other things. So this is something I know that I've heard about for a long, long time, probably as long as I've worked here with SDS2. Give me the loads, uh, display the loads in modeling and on my drawings. So, uh, Caitlin, take it away. 